Here's a fantastic question from Ghetto B. Says. Hey Steve, I really love hearing your appearance, uh, opinions and experiences. I have a question for you. I have read and studied a lot of spiritual information such as Eckhart and What the Bleep Do We Know. I have been very focused on the inner workings of life which is inspiring me to which is inspiring to me because it makes life deeper. Now I feel like my mind is going all day every day and friends around me are starting to tell me I'm becoming unemotional. They say on the phone I'm very boring because I never know what to talk about. I need help finding passion in my life and balancing the drama of life which keeps things interesting with spiritual growth. <clears throat> Do you have any opinion on the, my situation or need more information? No, I think that's a great question. Um, and something that I think anyone walking down the spiritual path, especially initially, will uh, encounter. And what happens is this, is we are geared, we're conditioned to react to the, to the physical material world and to be reactionary. So in other words, life drama happens and we get wound up, we get excited, we get intertwined in this whole uh, pseudo excitement of, uh, of everyday life and uh, all the dramas, troubles, and problems that we encounter. And if you watch any television, you'll know that you need turmoil, you need tension, you need problems, you need drama in order to create that tension, that excitement. You don't have that, the show won't last. And that's why there's not new, there's, you don't have news about happy, fluffy, positive stories. People don't want to hear that. They want that tension and turmoil. And what happens before we start to awaken, we're so, sub, our lives are subconsciously geared in that direction. And we're just automatically driven. Even people that are awakened, we still find ourselves being drawn towards that and engaged in uh, life, unnecessary life drama. What happens afterwards is you start to awaken and you start to just disconnect from the things that drained you physically, spiritually, emotionally financially and they're no longer essential they're no longer priorities in your life and you could just say no just say no no thank you I don't want to participate in that what ends up happening is it's we our ego is so identified with if you want to call it the pain body the drama body the the tension that we we as we disconnect we become less Life becomes less like a roller coaster ride where we're, we're high, we're sad, we're up, we're down. And we become, we stabilize. Yes, there's, you know, little dips uh, here and there. But overall, we're not extracting our happiness from the material world. We're not extracting our happiness from other people, love relationships. We don't need that love relationship in order to feel happy. We experience inner contentment. So there's like a self-sustaining um, process that goes within us that we're no longer so dependent on uh, the external world drama problems struggles and once you start awakening you find that the gossip and the superficiality that most people engage in it's just it's boring it's tedious it's no longer interesting to you and so you're no longer able to um, do that dance with other people. Do that. The, oh, did you hear what happened to this person? Can you believe that? And the whole reactionary and, oh, I'm so mad. I'm so bothered. And, oh, did you watch this on TV? Or did you go here? Or did you, um, let's go shopping? All the things. And you start disengaging. And people will say, oh, what's wrong with you? You're, you're unemotional. You're boring. You're um, not like you used to be. And because people, most people are living their lives run, directed, guided by the ego. The ego is their, their master. So when the ego is no longer your master, you're no longer reactionary, you feel just that inner peace. You can just ah, rest. And so yes, people, you're, you start shedding the old self, the old egoic strong shell that surrounded you starts cracking. And then inside is that softer, gentler, more loving, uh, at peace, tranquil uh, being or essence. 
and it takes people off guard. And some of the things you can do is what ends up happening is you just you recycle you cycle through new friends. So the friends that I had, you know, prior when I was run by my ego are no longer majority of them are no longer my friends today. And then you start attracting, you're, you give out different energy, and you start attracting different type of people. But you have to put yourself in the situation um, to attract those type of people through YouTube videos, um, through meetup.com is a great way, meditation groups, uh, Zen groups, whatever, Eckhart Tolle groups, whatever you find um, interests you, spending more time in nature. For me personally, it's been solitude. I absolutely cherish solitude. And uh, there's very few and far be uh, uh, between people that you really make that deep connection. I mean, if you could count them on one hand, you're a very blessed person. So solitude, I just absolutely adore. And you learn to embrace that. And someone wrote uh, in one of my comments, the further they go up the mountain, uh, the spiritual growth, whatever, the lonelier it gets. And there's a, there's a real truth to it, but it's not a loneliness, an ego-based loneliness. It's not a loneliness as woe is me, I feel so sad, I feel so lonely. I used to feel like that, but now it's a, oh, I get to be alone. I get to enjoy just being. Not to say that there's anything wrong with, you know, being with people, but I no longer find satisfaction in, this, in the superficial conversations and things like that. It's just, it's, it's, it doesn't interest me. I'm not saying it's it's wrong or it's bad. It's it's just not for me. So you start seeking out and attracting like-minded people. That's the first thing. The second thing I notice is there's a big stereotype in spiritual circles that once you awaken or once you start walking down the spiritual path, you're supposed to be this calm, almost like um, lobotomized, spiritual lobotomy where your, your personality is just flat and a lot of people say well that's because you're that's the way you're supposed to be because your ego's not running your life i don't necessarily i don't agree and that hasn't been my experience i still find a lot of passion joy energy in my personality um, i love to laugh joke around and be who i am the ego is still there in my life but it no longer runs my life the ego is my spirit, my being is the master and it, the ego serves that master. So um, um, there's an observation in your awareness of when the ego is trying to run your life. But your personality is still your personality. Your imprint of who you are is still essential to keep with you as you awaken, as you progress spiritually. Most people just try to lobotomize themselves and be flat, monotone. And you just you see that, that big stereotype with gurus, um, even Eckhart Tolle has that presence or that aura. Hi, my name is Eckhart Tolle. And just that very calm, relaxed. And I think that's genuine with him. A lot of people, I think it's forced and it's not really true to who they are as a, in, in their personality. So the important thing is to know thyself. Know your personality and be true to that. Just because one is spiritually awakened doesn't mean they have to become flat, boring, monotone, um, and deadened inside. You can still keep and, and treasure all the things that make you, you. And just letting go. It's, it's, it's a, it can be a tough process, but letting go to that old self, to the old friends, to the old addictions, to the old desires, to the old attachments. What I think keep, trips people up is they want to keep one foot in their old self, the world, and the other foot, they want to be spiritual or awakened. And I think that, it, that, can, be, that can be a challenge. That can be, um, cause more turmoil and suffering inside. And when you let go, sometimes there's a transition period you'll need, you know, where you're not immediately going to get rid of all your friends, but you'll transition. But the most important thing is just trust your inner, your inner compass, your inner being, your inner self. When you know that and it's, you're not basing it on, oh, what other people think of me or what are they going to say? You're basing it on a stronger internal force and remaining steadfast, true, and loyal to that. That will guide you. That's really the, the compass that you need. Um, to kind of navigate through the spiritual waters. Thanks for the great question. I hope that answers your question, and feel free to leave any comments. Um, talk to you later.